Now, there are a number of recommended um, practices, meaning that it is sunnah, it is recommended. But if you don't do it, there is nothing haram on you. Number one, taking a bath and wearing perfume for men and putting two white ihram garments. So bathing for the ihram is a highly recommended sunnah, but it's not mandatory. So if I just simply put on my ihram and go to Mecca, no problem. My ihram is valid, my umrah is valid, my hajj is valid. But the doing of the Prophet والسلام, and to wear perfume before wearing the ihram, and this is to glorify the state of ihram and to give a high, high status to this ritual you're about to perform. Men are recommended to wear two white ihram garments. So a waist wrapper or an izar, something that covers the two. It is recommended to clip one's nails, remove the pubic and armpit hair, and to trim one's mustache. And this is not backed up by any authentic hadith. So why are we mentioning it? We are mentioning it because you remember that the jurors, the scholars who write in fiqh, they are copying and imitating their scholars and the scholars above them and the scholars above them and then until they reach them. But not necessarily all these views are based on Quran and Sunnah. Some of it is based on ishtihad. Some of it is based on istihsan. Some of it is based on pure logic. So if you ask yourself, removing the pubic and armpit hair, is it part of the Sunnah? Definitely. Clipping the nails, is it part of the Sunnah? Of course. Trimming the mustache as well. But these are things related to fitrah as in the hadith 10 characteristics of fitrah hadith of, of mother aisha in sahih muslim and hadith of anas the prophet has timed for us alayhi salatu 40 days and not to exceed that for clipping the nails, for removing the armpit and the pubic hair. These are all sunnahs. We, we have no dispute in that. The problem is, is this sunnah related to ihram or not? The answer is no. So why do jurors mention it? Jurors mention it because they believe that once you are in the state of ihram, you may require a week, maybe two weeks, maybe more where you would be pro which is right so they say in order to move forward and to reduce the harm as much as possible this is recommended just before you enter the state of ihram so yeah it is recommended but it is not from the sunnah of the prophet ﷺ that we should say and relate it to ihram this is something that is logical by the scholars, but it is not part of the sunnah. Number three, performing the tawaf of arrival for those doing the pilgrimage in the ifrad or qirar methods. This means that two out of three of the rituals of Hajj, Quran and ifrad. When you come to Mecca on the eighth or on the seventh, of the hijjah it is highly recommended sunnah for you to perform tawaf al qudum which is a sunnah it's not mandatory and after it you perform sa'y al hajj which is a pillar which is usually done on the 10th day onwards not before but there is an exception because the prophet was in the state of qiran and he offered it on the 8th day of the hijjah Therefore, it is highly recommended sunnah to perform. But if you skip it, you said, nope, I'm not even interested in doing it. I'm going to do it on the 10th day of the Hajj, of the Hijjah with Tawaf al Ifada. Totally legit, and there's nothing wrong with that. Number four, 
jogging in the first three rounds of tawaf of a rival. This jogging is known as raml, raml, and it is to walk in short strides, steps, and in a fast fashion. The origin of it was that when the Prophet ﷺ came on Umratul Qada, they were blocked by the idol worshippers and they reached a truce and they made what is known as Sulhul Hudaybiyah. They wrote a treaty that the Muslims go back this year and come back next year. So the Prophet agreed to that, to make a long story short, they went back and then the following year they came in Ihram for Umrah. So the people of Mecca, as agreed, left their homes and went to the mountain tops and the hilltops, observing them, looking at them. Now you know that it's about 550 kilometers either walking or on camel's back. So it's a long journey that probably takes like three to five days. So when the companions reached Mecca, they were tired and weary. So the idol worshippers started mocking and joking. Look, look at them. The fever of Medina has affected them negatively. Look how weak and, and lazy they are. So the Prophet told them alayhi salatu wasalam that Rahim Allahum ri'an arahum min nafsihi quwa. May Allah have mercy upon every one of you showing them strength. So they started in this march type, short strands, fast paced. So the idols worshippers were looking and they were shocked and said, these are the guys that you claim that the fever of Medina has affected them? Wallah, they are jumping like deers and gazelles. So it became a sunnah for the whole of the Muslims. The first three, if you are performing tawaf al-qudum as a qarin or a mufrid, you do it. Other types of tawaf, no, you don't do that. So this is part of the sunnah, the three four, uh, uh, first rounds. Number uh, uh, five, bearing one's right shoulder when doing the tawaf of arrival. And this is for men only. So this same tawaf, tawaf al-qudum, where you stride three rounds, the sunnah is if I'm covering my shoulders with this towel, big white towel, once I begin my tawaf, I should bring the one that's covering my right shoulder, my left shoulder. So my right shoulder is not covered anymore. This is called in Arabic idtiba' and it has like two or three letters extremely difficult for non-Arabs. The dad and ta and ayn al idtiba' And this is how we know that a person is a native or not, by telling him, what is it called? It's ittiba', ittiba', you know, ittiba'. And it takes practice, a lot of practice. And this is the same with all Arabic letters. So many people say, they cannot do it. So. For non-Arabs, it is highly recommended to repeat it like a thousand times. Ain, ah, 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 ah. You keep on repeating it until you master it. it is, try not to let anybody listen to you while doing it because they will think that you're crazy. But this is how you pronounce it. So uncovering this is only in the first tawaf, tawaf al-qudum. And after, but this is not three rounds, it's the whole seven. So whenever there is Raml, there is Ittiba. The only difference is that Ramina, the night that precedes the day of Arafat, this day 
is known as the eighth day of Dhul Hijjah. This day is known as Yawmu at Tarwiyah. And Tarwiyah is the day where people take their camels and water them so that they, the camels, fill their stomachs with water because during the next three or four days there won't be water for them to drink so they call it yawmu tarwiyah the eighth day it's a day of preparation so it is a sunnah that you spend the eighth day in mina but it is normal if you go to arafat directly from jeddah or from wherever you're coming not passing by mina there's nothing wrong in that Number seven, repeating the phrase of Talbiyah from the time of entering into the state of uh, uh, consecration of Jamarat al-Aqaba on the day of Eid. So part of the Sunnah is if I reach the Miqat, take a bath, wear my Ihram garments, I start to say, لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك and I keep on repeating it repeating it repeating it on the day of Tarwiyah on the day of Arafat and جمرة العقبة on the day of Eid I cease and stop saying the تلبية خلاص it ends now and I would never say it again for the rest of my journey number eight offering the maghrib and isha prayers together in muzdalifa this is a sunnah likewise offering dhuhr and asr giving a sunnah and, and, and a concession from allah azza wa jal. but your prayer is valid does not impact your hajj number nine stopping close to al mashar al haram at Mizdalifa from Fajr until shortly before sunrise, if possible, if not, then any place in Muzdalifa. And this is part of the Sunnah which the Prophet did, alayhi salatu salam, that after he prayed Fajr, he stayed near al mashar al haram, which is in Muzdalifa, making dua, making dua until it was light. The sun did not rise, but it was light almost or about to rise and he concluded with that his Hajj Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we will get to talk about this inshallah later on. Um, 